Hello, everybody, and welcome to Have a Chat. I am your host for today's show, Judy Loge. It's a wonderful day here in Miramichi at the Rogers Studio. I'm joined by my friend, my relative through marriage, and my beautiful co-host, Veronique Arsenault. So glad to be back here on a gray Monday. A chilly winter-like Monday. I know, it's winter, it's gonna snow. It's crazy, <laughs> our weather. Whoever's watching from anywhere, I hope you're not experiencing what we're experiencing, just erratic changes. But uh, we'll get into more of that. Yeah. But first, tell me what you brought for the quote oh, this yes. week. Well, and I was thinking, you know, I, I was thinking about the seasons and about summer, really. I wanted something warm. But anyway, I love this one. Uh, it's by Yoko Ono. Oh, bless her. Is she still, she's still going? I believe so. Late, probably 80-ish. I would say, yeah. yeah. I believe so. So, spring passes and one remembers one's innocence. Hmm. Summer passes and one remembers one's exuberance. Nice. Autumn passes and one remembers one's reverence. Winter passes, and one remembers one's perseverance. My gosh, that's a beautiful show. I know. That so well. I know. Uh, uh, from that, obviously, you know, I'm a summer fan. Summer passes, and one's reminded of their exuberance. Well, that would be me, because it's, it's my season. Yes. <laughs> if I could live in just summer, have yeah. that just as a season, I would be very happy. Really, I? But I know you wouldn't be. September, October is my time to shine. No. <laughs> I I'm love it. Summer I, girl. I love the weather. It's beautiful during the day. It's cooler at night. And I, yeah, it's, I, I'm, I'm, my sweet spot is 22 degrees. <laughs> no, I can handle the heat really well yeah. and I'll never complain about it. What did you think of this crazy temperature? The past couple of nights on the weekend, like 37, 34, high humidity. Was yeah, I, I struggle in the humidity. Um, I'm not great around that temperature. I find it, you know, I find it like exhausting, kind mm. of like I find it, you know, really heavy and heavy. exhausting. But I was so happy to see some sunshine and to feel some warmth that nice. I didn't, I, I try not to complain about mm -hmm. the summer weather because you know, in the dead of winter when it's like minus 40, I'm like, no. <laughs> I know, that's right. And you know, we're almost to July. I know. So when you start thinking about that and then right on its heels, August, it flies by. Yeah, well, and I find it's almost, the weather's almost shifted, right? It mm -hmm. used to be like May, June, July, and August, yeah. kind of where you really got that, like May was really yes. starting to heat up. Now I find it's almost like July, August, September. That's when we're going to get our summer, I yeah. think, September, October. I'm hoping. Mm. And there's been so much happening in our area. Oh. Well, we've been doing um, more guests for the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and we skipped our quick chat. So mm -hmm. just to kind of catch up a little bit, graduation and prom was so exciting. Again, oh. it's always a highlight for us yes. and our students in the area, the staff, of yeah. course, the parents, yeah. grandparents, all, you know, so proud of their graduates and them themselves, just like, we did it. 12 years. Oh, what a time, eh? Like, I, I you know, I remember my own prom and, and grad, and, mm. and it's, it's just so amazing and they all looked so beautiful and so handsome oh. you know and just so spiffy really and it was it was lovely to see and you know yeah. such joy around that time and so. I said to Jansen who um, you know, he's out of university and into another program altogether now he's 24 but and my son my other son's 31 but when they graduated I found everything was just beautiful yeah. and the gowns and tuxes or suits were awesome but I have to say to anyone that's listening that had a student graduate this year, um, a family member graduate, and to the graduate themselves, this was to me one of the top, most beautiful prom walk-ins I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I would agree. It, and it's it's really interesting. I, I remember the last year that I chaperoned the prom. Okay. Because I was still teaching at James M. Hill at the mm -hmm. time, and I, was, I, I would chaperone the prom, which is not fun <laughs> um, but I remember that that last year it poured rain yeah. and and all of the the young ladies had these like in different colors every one of them but they were fitted at the top and then these big tool skirts oh, okay and I'm like there was rainbow colored and you know pink and like there was every color and it poured rain uh, it's a shame and that was a trend then yes but this year it was more the silhouetted shapes Beautiful. Uh, as far as um, almost like an evening gown yeah. but not frilly or fancy yeah. just really sedate and classy and mm -hmm. unbelievable the guys look just as great yeah and of course Patty and I had the chance of announcing them as they walked into James M. Hill so we were able to give them that extra oomph. you know here they come their proud moment so that was a really fun thing to do yeah. And other than that, I volunteered last week for the Volunteer Appreciation yes. Luncheon, which is for Shannox, both Loger and Bridgeview Hall. Yeah. They have, Veronique, about 150 
volunteers that go and serve there in so many different ways, whether it's through the clergy, the uh, the serve faith services. Yep. They do the Meals on Wheels, which is a very big dedication to get those meals. It's incredible. You know, how many times a day. Yep. And then the musicians, of course, yeah. which I said in my speech, if I was a resident there, I would want music because, you know, or just someone to come sit with me. Yeah. So there's those companionship type things. There's people that volunteer to read to them, do activities with them. And it was beautiful luncheon at uh, Loge Hall. And it was a fine moment to recognize people that do that. And I know how heavy you are into volunteering. Mm -hmm. So you know the appreciation you feel when oh, someone yeah. says, you don't want that thanks, but it feels good to be appreciated. Well, and it's, right? you know, and a thank you goes a long way. Yes, like it's, that's all. You know, and, and I mean, I, I, when I volunteer, I, I, it gives me energy, right? Because I, mm -hmm. I feed off of whatever it is that's going on, and I love it, and, and it's wonderful. But it, it is always nice to get a thank you. It's true. You know, because I think oftentimes volunteers are uh, unappreciated in the general, you know, day to day. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of these things, and we were talking about it off camera, but a lot of these events and things like that, um, they take months to organize yes. and plan and, and it's, you know, all volunteer hours. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's really, um, you know, it, it's amazing what people do. It's and it amazing. it looks so easy from the outside. Absolutely. Like, oh, it just went off with a hitch. Well, you don't know the planning that went into it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I said in my talk as the speaker, I said, you know, facts are facts. And if I add it up and I, you know, like if I got paid yeah. for the volunteer work that I've done mm -hmm. since I was 12 years old, Absolutely. now that I'm into my 60s, yep. if I was a single person, I would be literally well, well off. Yeah, I know I would be. Absolutely. Because just one evening event might be a four to five hour gig. Yep. And that's just one in the week. Absolutely. And I've been doing it since I was 12. Yep. But the reward, I said, money can never replace that reward that you get from giving just for the sake of giving absolutely. from the heart. It's absolutely. so absolutely wonderful to yep. do that and yep. get nothing but that, um, you know, I did something nice. No, and I and I agree, and I've been doing yeah. the same my my whole life because it was just expected, right? Mm -hmm. In our in our family, mom and dad were the same, and you know, and I, I there was one year um, where we tracked our volunteer hours, and it was I think Volunteer Miramichi that had um, connected to a national program, and that particular year, because I never you know I never think about it, I just you know it's we're here or we're yeah. you know we're doing something, but that particular year I tr I tracked my volunteer hours, and it was somewhere. 500 hours oh, that I year. I believe it. You never stop. Yeah. Well, and, and you don't either. And it's, and, and we're not unique. There are thousands I of volunteers know. in this city that do the same thing. That's why it's so nice to have recognition yeah, days. Absolutely. And appreciation days. Yeah. Uh, Veronique, let's just touch on, I mean, we're all, you know, it's we're talking about prom and nice weather and all that, but we do have to face reality that around us, people are very much affected and deeply, deeply saddened by that tragedy that took place with the absolutely. Titan submersible yep. um, just a few days ago. Yep. Where five outstanding contributors in our society mm -hmm. around the world, um, their lives were taken yep. in that mission yep. to try to find pieces and explore the Titanic. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I like I understand the fascination with the story of the Titanic. I don't understand the need to go down and, and to see it, mm. right? Like mm. I don't get that part. And I, like even in, in, the, in this particular instance, yeah. They, they weren't even going to see it. They were going to see it on a TV screen, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, like, I just, I don't understand that whole thing. But, you know, it's it, absolutely uh, a sad story, you know. And, and the one, one, one thing I will say, though, is by the sounds of things, thankfully, they didn't uh, suffer. It was no, quite, instant. quite instantaneous yeah. and, and quite soon after they went down. Yes. So, you know, because there was, there was that thought that they were there for four days, right? Waiting rescue. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's quite, um, it is quite sad and, and then, yeah, absolutely. And then at the same time, uh, in the Mediterranean Sea, there was a, um, a ship that went down with 700, uh, people seeking refugees. Uh, they were refugees <sighs> themselves. And so just, um, you know, just a lot happening. Heavy and tragic, yeah, just catastrophic. A lot, yeah. A lot happening. And, and sad me that is so claustrophobic mm. i can't even imagine you know what they well th that's their love right that's their passion mm -hmm. these are aviators that they mm -hmm. are navy commanders they mm -hmm. are divers they are researchers or scientists all of this and you know the age group varied quite a bit because um in the submersible there was a pakistani british gentleman who was one of the wealthiest men in Pakistan who was yep. a lot of you know he was really eager to go and take his 19 year old son with him who was yeah. a university student yeah. but having read up on some of this stuff the boy's aunt said that he was terrified to go 
definitely didn't want to go on that trip, but felt obligated to go for his father to That's please hard. his father. Yeah. Yeah. And That's then hard. there was a 61 year old gentleman. Um, these people were very like like used yep. to going. Like one man was, I think, 35 times doing an adventure, oh like a, a, one of these expeditions. Yeah. And the CEO of the company itself that that owned the submersible was on the yeah. on the sub. And one of them, I think it was the 61 year old gentleman. 77 was one age. 61, 58, 48, and 19 year old. So the mm. the, the age groups were all varied. That mm -hmm. older gentleman was, they said, the lead. Mm. Basically, he'd done this so many different times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, one man had held the World Guinness Book record for having um, navigated, like, navigated around the Earth the fastest. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Circumnavigated, they called wow. it. Wow. Yes, yes, yes. Um, did you want to pop in? We're going to go just from happy to something that we had to touch on that was terrible, so sad, but reality. Um, give us a summer something to look forward to, like as in the way of, if we get nicer weather, a snack, a beverage, a dessert, <laughs> something, yep. because I've been looking for some through my little books and online for entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. And it's my favorite dip to make. Oh, it's a dip? Yeah, it's my favorite dip to make. And it's great um, on a patio. It's great, you know, kind of hanging out and chilling with the friends. So, oh. yeah, and it's uh, and it's really, and you can make it the day before. It's easy? Yeah, it's okay. very easy, very okay. easy. So you just take a regular pan and you put um, uh, cream cheese on the bottom. Mm. And then uh, you put um, uh, a bit, uh, sorry, back up. Uh, ground beef with taco seasoning. You put that on the bottom. Right. Then you put cream cheese over top, and then you put a little bit of pizza sauce. Ah. Yep, I know it's got it, it's very good. Mm. And then um, a ton of uh, shredded cheese, and you bake it in the oven, and then you can have it cold or hot with some uh, nacho chips. Fan. Fantastic. Easy. I love it. Easy, easy, easy. Easy, easy, easy. I dug up one, <clears throat> Veronique, that sounds really good, and I'm going to do it because it's so simple. It's a summer dessert. Mm -hmm. So if anyone can uh, grab their pan or listen to this, it's um, yummy, yummy. Mixed berries and peaches brunch dessert. Oh. So I'm not a big peach girl, but yeah. I know a lot of people that are. So if you yeah. want to have When it feels like summer, peaches. Do you like that? I, I'm not a huge peach fan either, but peaches always feel like summer they do yeah. and they do and they're popular with a lot of people so yeah. this would feed a nice little family gathering or friends um you know just on a nice summer night so you will need one package of prepared pound cake easy mm -hmm. go pick up the pound cake Absolutely. you cut it into 14 slices so that's easy to buy you need two packages of the philadelphia brick cream cheese so that would be two packs of the 250 grams in each mm -hmm. package one third cup of sugar two teaspoons of vanilla three cups cool whip topping, one cup each of fresh blueberries, blackberries, mm -hmm. raspberries, and you take your two peaches and you peel them and you chop them up. So you just place the cake slices on the bottom of a 13 by nine inch dish. Mm -hmm. You just cut them up as necessary to cover the bottom of the dish. Mm -hmm. And then step two, you beat the cream cheese, sugar, and vanilla in a large bowl with, oh, with the so mixer good. until it's all blended. Yes. And you gently stir in the cool whip and then you just combine the fruit. So you stir one and one half cups of fruit into the cream cheese mixture. You spoon it all over your cake and you top it with the remaining fruit and then you refrigerate for three hours. So when you get it out, you have this lovely peachy, fruity cake with yes. the Cool Whip and, and a lovely little uh, pound cake on the bottom. That sounds delicious. I think it's grand. I love it. I absolutely do. I would, I would eat that. So <laughs> do you have any ins on what's coming up in our area. I do know there is a wonderful concert yeah. coming up. Tell us all about that. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on. Sorry, right. I have to pull up the phone because I don't want to forget. No. So um, on Friday, June 30th at 7 p.m., uh, Susan Butler mm. is um, putting on a concert. So the Salute to Canada. Nice. Uh, and it's at St. Mary's Church. And they've already got like quite a few other tickets sold. So there's going to be the villagers, young Miramichi villagers. Didn't know that there was young Miramichi villagers, no. but that's wonderful. Uh, Bert Munn, Miramichi fiddlers, Kate Berry, who we've had on the show, oh. of course. Uh, Jimmy Lawler, Elizabeth Shatford, and of course, Susan. So um, tickets, advanced tickets are $10 and at the door 15 so that's amazing. That is wonderful for a whole night of entertainment. And St. Mary's is a lovely venue. Yes. You're not crammed in there. There's so many pews no. to sit in, and yeah. I love being in a church for a concert. I know, me too, because the, the yeah. acoustics obviously are beautiful. the feeling of it all. Yeah, and then Canada Day. There is so much going on Canada Day. Okay. So there's the parade. 
uh, through the uh, downtown uh, Newcastle Business District. Uh, so you can register for that um, or come and see it, either one. And that's at one o'clock. There's the 11th annual Fisherman Pow Wow happening oh, on Waterford fantastic Green. Fantastic one. Sunrise ceremonies at six. I always, that's my favorite part. Mm. Uh, and then the grand entry at 10 and then so much going on that day. And then the um, historic Chatham Business District is also having a wonderful celebration. So from nine until five, open air market, kids games, music, entertainment, chalk oh. art, face painting, uh, food vendors, all sorts of stuff. And then uh, last but not least, at 11 a.m. that morning, there'll be the cake cutting in Queen Elizabeth Park and the flag raising with Mayor and Council. Actually, Mayor's away, Council. <laughs> oh my gosh, if you can take all that in. I mean, even if you can get a few of those wonderful moments in. I love markets too. And then fireworks that night. Fireworks. So it's, it, we we're going to have better weather, I'm hoping. Yes. We've got to. I've decided. It has to be planned. And I'm telling you, I was at a baby shower yesterday and Aww. it was fantastic. But the lady that was hosting it was going to have it outside because it was such a beautiful yes. area. The pool and yes. all these chairs. And then we just thought because of potential rain that we bring it inside. But my gosh, it's fun. Yeah. When you're watching them open all the beautiful gifts and sharing food. And it's the anticipation of, of this baby coming, right? Yeah. So and exciting. Do you know what is it's just minor, but to me it's kind of surprising that out of the 30 people or more that attended, the mother-to-be didn't receive one of the same cards. Oh, you're kidding. And you know that's that's rare. Especially, yeah, especially in a smaller community like ours. Well, when I go to pick a car, card out, like a Mother's Day card, I mean, I try to find the most yeah. special. Well, do you take time with that? I do. Cards are one of the things where I really, like, I'm not... From pretty much everything else, I'm a, like instant gratification, grab and go. Oh. But with cards, I actually take quite a bit of, of time. So do I, and I pour over them. I want them to be just right. Yeah. And so I was shocked because I, I had found one, a really sweet Martha Stewart one, and of course it was different. And then I thought, you know, the, the father-to-be, first time father-to-be must feel left out when he's yeah. not any part of the shower. Yeah. So it said to the amazing parents, you'll be yeah. amazing parents in the cover, and it showed the couple cradling the baby. Yeah, yeah. But I'm telling you, most people need a U-Haul now to get the gifts home. Oh, I, yeah, <laughs> I know. It's. In, I remember the last baby shower I was at was for uh, Carrie with the twins, and it was like, we needed a truck. Anyway, I yeah. wish all these mummies to be and daddies to be the best if you're uh, due for a new arrival anytime soon. Yeah. We are going to cut to break, ladies and gentlemen. Do not go far. Veronique and I are going to be back with our first couple of lovely guests. So, as she always says, grab a nice cold beverage or a tea and come back and join us. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, all of our viewers, welcome back to more Have a Chat. I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge, with my beautiful co-host, Veronique Arsenault. We are sunshine. We are. <laughs> we always try I'm to be. sticking with that. <laughs> You're going to stick with that. Yeah. And you won't want to miss this show. Um, try to stay tuned because we have such a fascinating topic which pertains to every single person watching the show today. And that is one of mental health and addictions. You either maybe have someone going through it or you've been going through it yourself or recovering um, but we have two fine ladies to tell you all about it and that is Whitney Price welcome Whitney Thank you. and Ashley Trevers so nice to see you again yes. after all these years <laughs> and they are with community addictions and mental health mirror machine yes. that's a huge area to work in <laughs> But before we get into it, Veronique and I are asking you all about it. V Whitney, tell us a little bit about yourself personally for the viewers and those who don't know you. Okay, so my name is Whitney Price. Um, I am an occupational therapist. This is my profession. I grew up in Miramichi, a um, lifelong Miramichi year. I left a little bit for school, so I graduated from Miramichi Valley High School. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, I did my Bachelor of Science at Mount Allison University. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went off to Queen's University for two years for my master's. So it's a Master of Science in Occupational Therapy. Huh? Yeah. That's <laughs> quite yeah. a beautiful educational background yeah. you have. Yes. I was very fortunate. I have some, some pretty good universities that I was able to attend. So. Wow, well educated. Yeah. Wow. And then after that, I came back to New Brunswick. I was working a little bit here and there around the province. Worked a little bit in St. John, Fredericton, Moncton, and ended up back here in Miramichi oh. since 2015. So yes. I'm happy to be home. I'm married um, to my husband since 2019. 
we have twins at home. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful babies. <Yeah. laughs> so I have a boy and a girl, Catherine and Henry. They were born in 2021. <gasps> During COVID. During COVID, yeah. yeah. So they're turning uh, two in August. Oh my goodness, gosh, they're so cute. Yes. Where does the time go? <laughs> it flies, yeah. <laughs> And then I'm expecting, so I have another little girl due in July, July 25th. That oh makes goodness. me so happy. You look yeah, radiant and blooming, you. and life is good for you. Life is good, yeah. And she's, and she's like, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I'm tired. tired. Yeah. You schedule, you do. Yeah. And actually, I've, like I said, she graduated with my Evan, right? I did. And yeah. so I've known this lovely lady for a long time, but yes. I haven't seen you lately. So I know, it's been a long time. Tell everybody all about you. Sure. Um, so I grew up here in Miramichi. Um, I graduated from JMH in 09 and then went on to I did St. Thomas for two years so from 2009 until 2011 mm -hmm. um, I kind of switched gears at that point and decided I wanted to go into nursing so I took uh, nursing over at UNB Fredericton mm -hmm. um, so I did four years there um, and then we kind of stayed there so I was in Fredericton with my partner Thomas yes. um, we decided to stick around Fredericton he had a good job at mm -hmm. J division the RCMP division out there so mm -hmm. we stayed there until 2019 um, in that time, I was working over at the Chalmers Hospital. I've always been in mental health, actually, since uh, really? since I graduated. Yeah, I, it wasn't really my intention. I kind of fell into it and just Passion fell out. in love with it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so I did inpatient psychiatry um, in Fredericton. And then I did, well, in that time, I guess I was also doing the ER psych Mm -hmm. nurse position Oof. out there too. Um, so I've been very fortunate to be able to to kind of see inpatient and the ER and now I'm in community. Um, but anyway, so in 2019, um, my husband was transferred actually back here to Miramichi, which was nice. fine because yeah. we're both from here. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, so I followed him. He came in January 2019. I followed in August when I got the fact position here. Okay. Um, so I've been here since August 2019. Um, we have a house. We're engaged, I guess. Yay! We've been engaged for a long time. So it's like, <laughs> we've been engaged since like September 2019. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always like, is this an announcement? But he's ridiculously good looking and he's my fiance. Um, and we have three dogs and three. we just got a third dog. I know. Oh, I my goodness. It, yeah, I know. It's busy, but it's But fine. I'm passionate about dogs. I so. am. Yeah, we just got a little rescue. His name's Paco. And he's very, very thing. nice. I find two of a lot I like I have two and I'm like yeah that's, two I know that's a lot and that's what I was saying to, to Thomas yeah. so I was like two is a lot he's like well we got two what's one that's more right like, oh. it's like baby it's like one more, one more. <laughs> one more. In the chaos already. Yes. <laughs> but let's establish your job description at mental health and community addictions mm -hmm. in Miramichi what your actual role is yeah so, as I mentioned, I'm an occupational therapist by trade. I'm not sure if everyone would be aware of what an mm. OT is, unless you've really had experience with an occupational therapist, you probably wouldn't know, but we're a rehabilitation professional that deals with um, occupations, which can be self-care, productivity, or leisure. So not necessarily a job, mm. but what you do to occupy your time. So if you experience an injury or an illness that's preventing you from participating in these occupations mm. or doing the things you want to do during your life, an occupational therapist um, can assist you with that. So it's kind of, it's a broad profession. People might know OTs from working with their child or their elderly parent, mm -hmm. um, but we also work in mental health. So mm -hmm. I've been working again, like Ashley didn't set out to work out in mental health, just kind of happened uh, yeah. to me. I took a maternity leave position here at the inpatient psychiatry. And so I uh, started working in mental health back then and now I am the clinical lead for two programs at Mental Health and Addictions, which are the Mobile Crisis Unit mm -hmm. and the FACT Team. And so the FACT Team stands for Flexible Assertive Community Treatment. All right. Yeah. So it's a model that we've adopted uh, in New Brunswick from a model in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. and we provide service in the community. And what's your job description, Ashley? Uh, so I'm a registered nurse, which yes. I'm, I mean, I'm sure lots of people are familiar with that, but I yeah. feel like when people hear registered nurse, they automatically think bedside Absolutely. hospital care, yes, right? Yes, they do. Um, but the community mental health nurse role is very unique, and but also very rewarding. Um, so I get to... Um, I get to spend time with my clients in their homes, um, mm -hmm. assessing their mental health. Um, I help them with their medication management, oh. with medication education, with diagnosis education. Um, I do provide some injections in the community as well. Um, it's, it's really, really fun. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm a registered nurse with the FACT team. 
with the with it's amazing. As well. Very good to know exactly mm -hmm. what you both do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and the fact. The fact. The fact. <laughs> the, fact. Yeah. the fact that you actually exist as a as an organization is quite amazing yeah. because it's it's um I, I you know mental health is one of my passions. Judy and I talk about it often. We, yes. Um, uh, but I did not. I knew about the Mobile Crisis Unit, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is which is amazing. But I didn't know about facts. So mm -hmm. this is and good. I'll talk a bit more about facts. I can't yeah, wait well, to hear about this. Sure. this is, and I didn't know what an occupational therapist did. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, that is such a really simple explanation. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, it's the things that occupy you. I'm like, oh duh, yeah. yeah. Um, so Whitney, talk to us a bit about your services and and what uh, what um, what we could expect. Sure. So um, basically. We're community mental health and addictions, which is under the broader kind of umbrella of mental health and addiction services. So we have the inpatient side, which would be like our inpatient detox, inpatient psychiatry. Mm -hmm. And then when you go over to the community, we have um, two kind of, um, we split into two as far as youth services and then adult services. Mm -hmm. So our youth services are, um, we call the Child and Youth Mental Health and Addictions, and they operate under a model called the Integrated Service Delivery Model. So they're providing wraparound mental health services to you, children and youth in the community, and they're based like in the schools where the kids oh, are. Yeah. Um, and they work closely with education and social development and mm. all the agencies that surround that child um, to provide services. They also um, op kind of a new program that has rolled out in recent years is called one at a time therapy mm -hmm. and so that's that type of service is accessible if you're a child and youth or you're an adult and it's basically working under the premise that you can walk into mental health and addiction at any time or call up our main line and say i need to talk to somebody Good. and somebody will be available to talk to you right away it's not going to be a waitlist situation it's going to be a what is the presenting problem, what's going on, and we're going to give you a treatment session Wonderful. within three days, basically, yes. is the goal. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so you can access that through children, the child and youth team or through adult services. Um, and then also under adult services, we have um, counseling, like one-on-one -on -one counseling for people who need it. We have um, the Miramichi Addiction Recovery Clinic, the MARC Clinic, which provides opiate replacement treatment mm. for folks that struggle with opiate addiction. Yes. Um, so that's a very busy service. They also provide addictions counseling there. Wow. So there, you know, traditionally we think about methadone, but over the years we also have Suboxone and we have a new um, way of administering it, which is a, an injection, a long acting injection called Sublocade. Mm -hmm. So the nurses that work there and the doctors that work there um, kind of manage that service. Um, mm -hmm. We also have group therapy. Um, so we have group group treatment. Some of them are educational groups on, you know, mental health 101 mm -hmm. or relapse prevention for addiction. So those that's offered through our clinic as well. Um, and then, so those are kind of our more traditional services. Um, and a big focus lately has been on outreach and increasing access. Mm -hmm. So since, you know, the past few years, we've, all, we've rolled out FACT, we've mo rolled out mobile crisis units, mm -hmm, which yeah. hopefully everyone has heard about, but it's essentially a team of nurses and social workers yeah. that are on call for our community. Um, so they can receive phone calls from the community if someone's experiencing a mental health crisis or they, their loved one is experiencing a mental yes. health crisis. They also work really closely with the police. Um, mm -hmm. So in our area, as you guys know, we're very rural and we're serviced by multiple policing agencies. Yeah. Yeah. So we deal with the Miramichi City Police, we deal with RCMP, Blackville, Nigua, mm -hmm. Rishabukdo. Mm -hmm. um, when they get a call for a mental health crisis, they call us. So yeah. it's a partnership. Mm -hmm. We go out together, we offer services. The intention is to keep people in the community and offer them help where they where they need it. Mm -hmm. So the intention is to kind of try to navigate the mental health crisis and stay, you know, in the community if at all possible mm -hmm. or facilitate a hospital admission in the least disruptive way for the client. Um, right. 
if needed. What an extremely busy team yeah. and yeah. program, yeah. And, yeah. but your yeah. services are incredible and we can never have enough of them. Yes. And for those that are seeking work in that area mm -hmm. with treatment and addiction and yeah. mental health, there's going to be work, right? Yeah, for sure. Because you're, there's never a dull moment, and yeah. unfortunately, there's always someone there that's probably going to be calling that line and, yeah. Yeah, and, and need those resources yeah. in place. Mm -hmm. So wonderful work you're yeah. doing. Thank you. And Ashley, you're, uh, as you said, a couple of times a registered nurse, and you're on the FACT team. So yes. tell us more about your area. Sure. Um, so FACT is an acronym. So it stands for Flexible Assertive Community Treatment. Um, FACT is a collaborative uh, team um, consisting of, you might have to remind me if I forget someone, but uh, two registered nurses, um, an OT, a social worker, mm. uh, an LPN, a human service counselor, a peer support, a Ooh. clinical coordinator, wow. and and our psychiatrist, and then we have great admin staff yeah. that help yeah. us out as well. Um, so it's a collaborative approach, a team approach, which is awesome because mm -hmm. it allows us to bounce ideas off of different professions so we can see you know, the best way to help yeah. our clients from different, different yeah. professional views. Um, it was started in 2017 as a way to address the um, kind of the diverse needs of our, our community, um, to address the mental health needs. Um, Traditionally, mental health services were provided mostly at the clinic in an office setting, right? right. So if you wanted mental health services, mm -hmm. um, you had to make your way over to the clinic, sit right. down with your clinician in an office. That's not how FACT operates, which is wonderful. Um, it is more of an outreach um, program. Mm -hmm. um, and we operate mostly for clients who have serious mental illness with functional limitations that require more of a... Um, collaborative approach to their care. So most of our clients have schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, or bipolar disorder. Okay. So um, the most kind of vulnerable people in, in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a good way to be able to make sure that there is equitable mm -hmm. access to care, right? Yeah. Because a lot of those clients for various reasons, whether it's, you know, lack of social supports, lack of transportation, you know, lack of insight, which mm -hmm. is a big part of, of that as well. They, they don't want to or have no way to get to the clinic right. for no. services, yeah. right? Yeah. So it allows us with FACT to go to them. Yeah. Um, so the F in fact stands for flexible, which means that we're flexible with where we go to meet with them. So if they want to meet with us at their parents in the parking lot behind the clinic oh. and go for a walk, uh, mm -hmm. we've gone to Sobeys and Walmart and the food yes. bank, like, you know, wherever, wherever they need us, need. yes, yeah. we'll go. Um, and it's it's really a great program. And it is, yeah. and the security they must feel knowing that there's someone yeah. there. Like if Absolutely. they're in a dire moment and you're just desperate and reaching out, that mm -hmm. you, the, I hope you're listening everybody that these uh, services are available. Yes. And we won't get into too much more in-depth conversation about specific topics mm -hmm. because we're gonna go to break soon, yep. but just the stigma. We'll never, Absolutely. like we're wondering how <laughs> and if it's getting better before we go to break, can we just touch on it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it's yeah. funny because I, I used to be the president of the Schizophrenia Society yeah. Yes. and uh, the association and I always used to say if I if I put on social media tomorrow that I broke my leg everybody would flock to me mm -hmm. and say how can I help you yes. what can I do for you yeah. if I if I put on social media tomorrow that I had been diagnosed with depression schizophrenia yeah. whatever it would it, people go ooh Yes. Yeah. Right? And and it's still even though we still we talk about it every day it's still there and that's mm -hmm. tough. And it's just so much of the unknown, I think. People yeah. just don't really understand it unless you've lived it or mm -hmm. you know someone that's lived it. It's really hard to understand how it works and then it truly is a neurological. All they see is what they see in the movies, yeah, right? Exactly. And that's never and good. That's no. <laughs> no. And you know, there is treatment. People do recover Absolutely. and you know, with the right supports, Live you wonderful would, lives. Yeah, yeah, live wonderful lives and you would never know. Never know. Absolutely. No. Um, so it's just kind of, it's the fear of the unknown, the stigma of the media portrayal of, of people. Um, but we are like the people we work with are rock stars. Oh, like, surely, yeah. 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 My favorite people. Yeah, That's for amazing. sure. Yeah. yeah well, like, when you talk about tr group treatment, yep. so if, say, I was a parent um, of a young person, 16, that was into trouble yep. um, with addiction, um, having that issue, and maybe some mental health issues yep. as well, mm -hmm. um, is there a program just for me? to go to you without my child and say, how can you support me? How do I cope with this? How do I deal with this issue? And 
is or what when you say group is it mother child type thing or how do they work so groups typically are just like people who are experiencing similar concerns so like you mentioned a caregiver group would be something that's something that's not in place right now right but could be put into place should there be a need there are community agencies like the schizophrenia society that yes. do provide those type of groups as well and sometimes, mm -hmm. like Ashley has gone as a guest speaker mm -hmm. to, to a group like mm -hmm. that to educate. Um, but we would also offer that support one-on-one -on -one too, if yeah. needed. So mm -hmm. especially with our FAC team, we do a lot of family involvement. We do a lot of family support, education, um, and just trying to, how I see it is our goal is to help parents be parents mm -hmm. and not case managers and parents yes. or therapists and parents that's right. a good point so just take that part of it and we'll we'll take that and yeah. you just be their mom yeah because mm -hmm. the other challenge that often goes hand in hand often not always but is is mental health and addictions yes because trying to cope yes. right yes. and so it becomes a real challenge in 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 you know medic medication and Make everything else so she's right on the point and we're going to get back to it we're going to break, do not go far, come back for some more, have a chat, everybody. Hello and welcome back for more Have a Chat. Again, I'm your host for today's show, Judy Loge. It's always a pleasure to be joined by my co-host, Virini Garcino. <laughs> It's a delight to have two wonderful ladies on, Whitney Price and Ashley Trevers. They are with Community Addictions and Mental Health Miramichi, giving all kinds of incredibly important information to our viewers today. So we're having a very in-depth conversation about all of your services and treatment options. So Veronique, you were gonna ask them a question before break. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's amazing too, like, the connection that you make with the, the community organizations as well is, is always a, a wonderful thing because so much gets done in those oh. you know so associations and you know I talked briefly about the schizophrenia society and and that was founded by two mothers yes. right mm -hmm. who had no support and services yes. 30 years ago well mm -hmm. almost 40 now yeah. but um, so and they dedicated their lives to finding support and for their children yeah. but also for others mm -hmm. right and I, I find that fascinating but so glad to yes. see it now uh, happening in community because that's where we need to be mm -hmm. but Whitney, when we talk about accessing service, right, and, and Ashley touched on it about, you know, you going to them, but um, how do we, how, how does someone access your services? Like, do you need to be referred? Is it, you know, do you need a doctor to say, yeah, okay, you're, you're, something's going on? Or can you just say, I, something's wrong? Yeah. So we kind of operate at Mental Health and Addictions under the kind of premise that every door is the right door. So we're really trying to work on increasing access, mm -hmm. Um, outreach services but you do not need to be referred by a doctor you can absolutely self-refer you can walk into the clinic so just for those who may not know our clinic the physical location is at 1780 Water Street so we uh, our main reception is on the third floor there so you can call our number is uh, 778-6111 and say you're looking for services we have a whole team it's called the access team <laughs> that kind of helps us determine what is the need of that individual. And that goes for psychiatric services as well, which is unique to Miramichi itself. Mm -hmm. um, there is no gatekeeping the psychiatrist. <laughs> um, yeah. You don't need a, a family physician. Amazing. You, We can refer to our psychiatrist as mental health clinicians. Mm -hmm. And our psychiatrist may even come with us on home visits. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll plug Dr. Sanjay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, yeah. He's, he's done some amazing some work. Some amazing work, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, every door is the right door. That could be the ER. That could be the mobile crisis. That could be 911. You know, we're, when you have a mental health issue, we want to make sure that we are supporting you in whatever way you need. So, you know, the I, something I didn't touch on was we do have a new mental health um initiative in the emergency department as well so mm -hmm. there's a new team ashley mentioned that she worked as an rn mm -hmm. um at the men in the er in fredericton we didn't have anything like that really set up in miramichi until recently so we have funding for a mental health team in the er so if you present to the er with a mental health concern um there are, there is a mental health team there to try to mm -hmm. help you navigate so you're not waiting you know, with someone with a broken leg for something that's very different right. for the uh, 
for the emergency um, doctor. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 and I think too, it, it, for so many, and it can be very overwhelming, yes. right? To, to even say, I need help, yes. you know, for mental health, right? Yes. Or addictions. And so the fact, no, I keep going back to facts. Yes. That's what happens, right? I love it. I know you, I know, I, I know, you, I know. I I know it's, it's stuck there now. But, um, because, uh, because there is a, an opportunity for just walking in, yeah. you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's intimidating to call and say, I have a problem yes. or, and maybe today I'm feeling a little bit braver and maybe I can just walk in off the street or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I love the idea that every door is the right door yeah. and that, that you can't, you don't have to go one way yes. to get the help that you need. No, I do. I agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah. That was well said. Yes. Um, Ashley, what about are there new directions coming forward for mental health and any like taking a new uh, direction for treatment? For addictions? Yeah, so uh, so Mental Health Now is working with what's called the recovery model. Um, so the recovery model is um, it's a model to look at, or pro- to approach mental health care, sorry, that believes that uh, recovery is a journey and kind of a con- continuum and not just one final destination, mm-hmm. right? So if you're having mental health struggles, it's not once I do this one thing, I'm fully recovered, I'm great. Right. It's, it's a continuum, it's a journey, and it's everyone's own individual journey. Yes. Um, so the nice thing about the recovery model is it kind of allows the client client or the person you know experiencing the mental health struggles to be the pilot of their own plane and then we just get to be the co-pilots you know um so they're steering the plane on their own so the recovery model their goals they come up with the goals on their own we help them along the way you know Mm -hmm. we help them to identify and discover strengths and abilities that maybe they wouldn't have noticed in Mm -hmm. themselves Mm -hmm. right um but they come up with their own recovery goals and we help them to identify specific abilities strengths community partner, partners, social supports that might help them yeah. um, along the way in that journey. Um, and yeah, and, and community and social supports are huge um, with the recovery model because if you're telling someone, okay, here's your goal, now go do, go do it on your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's just not yeah. fair and it's, it's intimidating and it's hard. Yeah. So it's really nice when you do have community partners like, like the Schizophrenia Society yeah. or you know, fam- natural family supports and stuff like that yeah. to help yeah. along the way. So we're kind of there to guide them. Um, another thing we've been looking at too is like Whitney said, um, increased access. So trying to open up as many doors as possible to allow mm-hmm. for people to, to find their way into mental health services. What we don't want is for people to ever feel like they've fallen through the cracks no. or, you know, they, they needed help, but they didn't know how to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we want to make it as seamless as possible. Um, so some of the ways we've been doing that is increasing, like she said, increasing our services, um, you know, go doing more outreach, doing that mobile crisis. Um, Mental health services, for the most part, are voluntary. So it's, mm-hmm. you know, someone can come forward, has to come forward and say they want it. But with all the different ways of access now, family members can help encourage or kind of push that. You know, they can, like a family member can call Mobile Crisis and say, you know, I have a family member who I'm concerned about. Can you talk to them? And they yes. will, right? So it's not putting all the onus on the person who's struggling. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really helping to kind of increase that access. Um, <clears throat> which I think is really, really important. And that outreach piece is huge. Mm -hmm. You know, going to people, that that equitable kind of uh, delivery of care. Um, You know, mental illness and and mental health struggles, it's not second nature for someone who's struggling to want to go out and and be motivated and seek help. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So, So that outreach is huge. And like Whitney said, we're very lucky to have a psychiatrist that will do home visits with us because yeah. because that's actually very unheard of nowadays, right? right? Yeah. It's 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 pretty unique and house it's pretty calls special. Don't happen, no. no, house calls don't happen, no, right? Like they used to. Um, it's pretty unique and pretty special. Um, so that outreach part is huge. Um, so with mobile going out um, and with fact, and we do have some adult team um, clinicians that will will do home visits as well um, for clients who need them, maybe because of you know physical limitations or just for various reasons, really, yeah. Um, so with the mobile uh, crisis teams, and um, so if, if I had a family member, let's say, that I was concerned about, can I call and say, mm-hmm. I'm really worried about, you know, so-and-so, he's not, I, he's not himself, you mm-hmm. know, the last little bit, or, I, you know, I can't get a hold of him today, mm-hmm. that kind of thing, yeah. and, then, and then someone will go? Yeah, well, it, you know, as Ashley mentioned, it is, we do operate under consent, but right. we will certainly reach out mm-hmm. and tr- do our best to do an assessment and 
to make the determination of what is going on here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how can we offer help? Mm -hmm. So we get calls from family members all the time. And even things that are not clear cut because we have such experienced RNs and social workers on our team, you know, we might be trying to figure out, is this person experiencing a mental health crisis or is there something physical going on? You know, mm -hmm. are you know are they diabetic and their sugar is slow? Yeah. Right. Uh, you yeah. know, it's not that's not right. the intention of the service, but because these these yeah. RNs are trained medically, they're able to kind of weigh all the options right. and do an assessment under a, a different lens. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But don't you find it consoling to know that there are such resources in place? Because Absolutely. if you hadn't come on our show, people know that mental health exists yeah. mm -hmm. and that there's treatment centers available, but they don't know the extent of what we're learning here today. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's and the problem is, right, is that if they do know about it, all they know is, well, the wait lists are like, yeah. you know, yeah. a year long and there's <laughs> not, you know, I can't get in or Bob couldn't get in last, you know, yeah, sure. last year when he yeah. was having a crisis, yeah. right? The negative aspects right or, or <laughs> went to the ER and they got turned yeah. you know turned yeah. away or whatever and mm -hmm. those things have happened absolutely yes. but but that's all they know yeah. of the services. And things have changed so much since then like right. we've, we've so added so many different programs to help exactly those mm -hmm. reasons the wait list you know we have that one at a time therapy to get people in mm -hmm. quick um, the ER wait times we have the ER mental, mental health, health that fantastic. will slow down that wait time yeah. it really um, is. another thing we've been looking at a lot really um, at our center too is is looking at ourselves and making sure that the caregivers are are taking care of themselves. I was thinking of that, the stress yeah. load that you carry mm -hmm. as staff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, day in and day out, people's very deepest troubles mm -hmm. that yes. you're trying to work through and help them through and their families through and, and their friends through. It's just, it can be overwhelming to deal with one person going through mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. particular scenario. But when you get like steadily, yes. you know, an influx of people dealing with addiction problems and mental health mm -hmm. issues, it can be very, trying absolutely i mean i think most if not everybody obviously that are in this job are in it because we love people and we want to care for them and we're going to give it our all and it's mm -hmm. obvious and, that you are right and so we, you know we really really push and we want to do our absolute best for our clients but sometimes that's at the the risk of maybe not looking after after ourselves right. enough absolutely yeah, yeah. putting so, others ahead exactly so caregiver burnout is very real so mm -hmm. the clinic has been really good um about you know making sure we're looking after ourselves we have Ooh. the wellness committee that um, mm. comes up with you know fun activities yeah. for us to do you know in the afternoons as, t as teams and mm -hmm. and yeah to look after Necessary ourselves. for sure. Yes and even just the increase in services that we have now has mm -hmm. been a huge help in mm -hmm. in our caregiver so, burnout. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know for example when I started working with mental health um, back in 2019 we didn't have mobile crisis we didn't mm. have the ER you know uh, mm -hmm. mental no. health um, so on Friday at 4 30 when I shut my phone off the people that I was worried about at Friday on Friday I continued to worry about of them course. for the weekend yeah. you know and in the evenings like you know mm -hmm. it's hard to shut that it off certainly would be. Um, but now we kind of have this like continuity of care going on with our new programs mm -hmm. that if I'm worried about someone at the end of my shift I can tell mobile crisis right. hey can you check on this person on a Saturday for such me such a relief yes <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that in itself has helped, I think, our caregiver mm -hmm. burnout or, yeah, a yes. lot. What are some of the barriers, though, that you're seeing? So, yeah, certainly doesn't go without barriers. <laughs> um, some of the big um, barriers we're facing, especially today, post-COVID, is housing. Yeah. Housing's huge. It is. Um, so we we're talk, working on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, you know, when someone's basic needs are not met, yeah. it's very difficult to to progress towards recovery, yeah. right? If you're always staying in survival mode. Um, and then, of course, our clients may experience mental health and addictions problems. They're not maybe the most desirable tenants um, all the time. So yeah. it's hard to, uh, to find safe, affordable housing mm -hmm. for people to live. So that's mm -hmm. big. Um, and just navigating systems. Um, so yeah. like we know our mental health systems, to someone off the street, that's probably really complicated to them. Absolutely. And so in in addition to mental health, we're dealing with income assistance and housing supports yes. and just trying to navigate where do we go for help, what's mm -hmm. out there. Um, so that's changing all the time. So we really have to keep up with what's yeah. going on in the Absolutely. community. Um, and then transportation is a really big issue okay. for us um, because we service such a large area. We service our health zones. We're going down to Tabitha Tech, Rogersville, mm -hmm. uh, Eskumanak. <laughs> yeah. um, 
And so our clients don't always have the means to get Absolutely. somewhere. So we do work a lot with our community health centers too. If people don't want home visits, we can meet them at the Basin Inn Health Clinic, yeah. uh, the Nigwak Health Center, um, in our First Nations communities and their yeah. health centers. So, you know, we, we're problem solving around it, but transportation, of course, is a big barrier in, in rural environments like yeah. this. And yeah. when you're talking about housing, I mean, just that alone is an issue. And then we're looking at our inflation, the cost of living. Yeah. That would be enough yeah. to cause anyone that has anxiety, yeah. for example, or is in a uh, state of depression, yeah. to become more so. Because yeah. the worry is even furthered by, how am I going to feed my family? Yeah. How am I going to pay this bill? How am I going to do this and that? So you must see a continual rise mm -hmm. in the needs of people to service. Yeah. Because well, of everything, like the housing, yeah, like you just absolutely. mentioned all the barriers, but that, the cost of living is just one other. Yeah. Well, and that's that's something that the, the you know, Marion Council is keenly aware of. And I, I sit on a working group for housing, actually, right. affordable yeah. housing. And uh, and there's some out of the box thinking coming. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Some yeah, some some things yeah. that we're that we're delving pretty deeply into right now that we oh, hope will will improve some of that, yeah. uh, including you know some of those uh, who are experiencing homelessness and and uh, that affordable housing piece as well mm -hmm. to get them on the continuum to you know to home right yeah. to yeah. home yeah that would make you feel really you know that as a council I know that they're taking the strides oh, to, yeah, to sure. get us in a better place and we really appreciate you and your council mm -hmm. here unique yeah. um, any last messages from either one of you to anyone listening about you know just a final thought to how to reach you or what to say to those that are struggling. I think just reaching out, um, mm -hmm. just being um, open to reaching out and knowing that you're going to be received with someone who cares mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily, you know, we're moving away from that medical model. We're really trying to work with people, their families and where they're at. Um, so just not being afraid to take the first step. And non-judgmental. Non like you're afraid to yeah. go, like you said, yeah. Veronique, it's, what's the mm -hmm. shame? I mean, it's your mind that's, uh, you know, yeah. or, or an addiction that you have, mm -hmm. um, you know, unfortunately acquired. Uh, so you're there saying, look, we're here to help. We're not here to judge. We want yeah. to get you in a better place. Ashley, any final word, my dear? I mean, I would agree with Whitney. I think step one, if you're not sure, just call 7786111, like yeah. that's our main line. And if you're not sure, you know, what program's appropriate or how to receive, um, how to get access for either you or a loved one, mm -hmm. even if we don't have the answers right away, whoever answers we'll the phone them. is going to care yeah. and they're going to find, you know, the appropriate route for you to go. Um, mm -hmm. And and yeah, I, th I think that would be that, that would be step one seven seven eight six one 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 main line. Seven, seven, yeah, eight, if, six, if you one, don't know one, one. if you don't know where to go, <laughs> call that number. And like I said, we really do care. The person at the other end is going to help you no matter what. They're going to okay. put you in the right direction. Compassionate yeah. and Love it. Uh, like I said, we've been trying to get people on here that are giving us this very wide range of information because like we're a community that's hurting at all times, mm -hmm. right? We know that the kids after COVID and the adults struggling at home and not being able to go to work, everything changed. Mm -hmm. For those three years, everybody was impacted. Yeah, for sure. And the surge you would have seen would have been like threefold, tenfold, mm -hmm. what yeah. you normally would, right? Yes, and you know, people were stripped of all of their coping strategies. Yes. Absolutely. Like all of their, you know, things that helped them with their recovery was taken away. Your routine, your schedule, your, your even your sleep schedule, yeah. your yeah. interaction with other people, hobbies, yeah. everything was yeah. taken. Everything, so. but we're back now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you yeah. enough, both of you girls. Whitney <laughs> Price, Ashley Trevers, Veronique, mm -hmm. and I, we all want to say take care of yourselves. Reach out to the center and these women and their staff if you're, if you're needing in any way help with mental health or addiction. They are there to help you get through it all. We wish you a great week, everybody. Thanks for joining us for Have a Chat.